Hello Twin Flames, welcome to my channel, welcome to your daily energy check-in and of course welcome to the new week. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while the last few days. I went away for the weekend uh, to the north, so you know, uh, actually the first day was really nice. We went to the lakes and the weather was wonderful. Uh, we hiked everything and then the next day just switched off like that. And it's suddenly, I don't know, like 40 degrees Fahrenheit and rainy all day. Um, so yeah, but that was just upstate. You know, I got back to the city and it was again 70. And I was told there was sunshine. I didn't really see it because it was late by the time I got home. But, you know, it's very interesting how the weather could be so different relatively similar area but i'm glad to be back in somewhat summery weather still it is getting cooler this week but i'm still quite happy with it and i've got full of energy hopefully you guys enjoyed the pre-recorded readings that i did for the over the weekend obviously I recorded them before i left uh to make sure that you continue getting the guidance and today i will send out a newsletter I will provide details to the sweepstakes to get a personal reading. By the way, that will be working for both of my channels, for the Mindful Bamboo and for Mindful Twin Flame. I'll pick three winners on each. So you can actually participate in both. Like it's, there isn't gonna be a limit, like you can only do one of them. You can participate in both and then obviously we'll uh, get your chances higher in what you're getting. Although the structure of the reading, of course, would be somewhat different because on a Twin Flame channel, we'll focus on the Twin Flame journey. Mindful Bamboo is going to be a little bit more generic, uh, maybe without so much focus on the Twin Flame stuff. But yeah, anyway, it's pretty easy to participate. You just need to be subscribed and leave a few comments on the, over the videos, different videos, and you're in. And yes, you can have you can multiply the number of comments and I'll get you in more times. But I will provide all the details on the community tab in the post and also in the newsletter. Let's start with an oracle message and we're starting off with Divine Feminines as always. I've got my Whispers of the Ocean deck and your card today is in the light of the moon. Just perfect since we have full moon coming up this week. I believe it's going to be early morning for New York time zone on Thursday but so that would be the 17th I want to say <laughs> if I got my math right of October uh, for those who live in Europe or in Asia um, well actually it's also going to be 17th yeah for the majority of you guys it's going to be 17th uh, of October so I will definitely do a reading a special reading for this full moon in Aries uh, in advance uh, so it will be Wednesday or maybe even tomorrow we'll see I'll check I'll check my plans for this week and I'll decide I'm also preparing for a dental surgery so there may be another gap of a couple of days when I don't show up I will try to plan and pre-record but you know Life can get chaotic, so who knows? But just know if I'm not there, then I'm probably recovering and just means I'll be back soon in a couple of days, hopefully. And then of course, my hope is always that I just need a couple of days to get over, right? Like it's all gonna be great. Then I'm gonna be back to normal, but we'll see what happens. Um, so for the masculines, we have disengage from outcomes. I actually kept talking about it on the Fridays, Mindfully Awake, where I spoke about patience and non-attachment, you know. Let go so you can open yourself to the highest love that you deserve. Find ways to release worry or any unresolved lack of forgiveness you may be holding on to. Very interesting, right? How... Um, how they build the connection between the detachment of, from the outcomes and forgiveness. Find ways to release worry or any unresolved lack of forgiveness. Or I would say it's, it's such a weird way to phrase it, unresolved lack of forgiveness, right? I would just say bring more of that forgiveness energy in, right? 
because if you're trying to control the outcome because of the that's basically what they say because of the negative experience you had in the past um then there is something unresolved there to deal with right to bring closure to that situation or forgiveness or both whatever is needed of course it will depend on what is it exactly you manifest in this case um it feels like they're talking about love relationships specifically I'm also here with the dream way tarot, which a dreaming way rather, which I haven't used for such a long time. I don't even remember when was the last time. I definitely put it away for a few months. Let's put it that way. So today I noticed it and I was like, it's on the shelf. That's why <laughs> I don't notice it as much because I'm I have the luxury of having most of my decks on the table, I have enough space. But I also have a different storage place for my decks. So sometimes that's the rotation. All right. Bottom of the deck, Nine of Cups. It's a little bit more melancholic Nine of Cups than we're used to. That actually could be connected with like worry uh, about the future based on the past. Very interesting, right? By the way, for the feminines, full moon, I, do, I don't think I read the whole message here. A full moon can shine light on what you have been resisting. This can be anything from your fears to your soul's beauty, right? This is like looking it in the eye. What have you been ignoring or not wanting to admit to yourself? Is it your talents, your achievements, your fears, your, uh, I don't know, trauma that's stopping you from going full on towards your dreams what is it the full moon is gonna show and because it's a full moon in aries that's coming in uh it will be about your needs and wants it's a very personal sign right the aries is the first house it's me myself and i what is necessary what do i want right what are my needs a lot of times uh we are raised to think about others to take care about others and we don't focus so much on what is my happiness and when we start our own family even less so right because uh we're in a relationship we're in a couple we're considering our partners wants and needs a lot of times it's easier to agree to what they want than to uh say out loud what we want then if, again we have children and you take care of them and you overextend yourself and it's about them and making them happy and stopping them from crying or screaming or throwing a tantrum or whatever else, right? Then your parents get older and you're like, okay, well, now I need to be more understanding and take care of them, right? Because they need my help at this age. They aren't as capable as they used to be, uh, right? And then you start giving that way and it's like, well, what about you? Very important. Speaking of which, five of swords. Don't fool yourself thinking that uh you know there's always there's all there there can always be justification to put your needs or even fears to bed and just go on and do something for somebody else and we actually saw that a couple of days for the feminine that feminine was getting out of their head and helping others right but there should be a healthy balance between and when we're talking priorities generally speaking the priority should still be self-care self-regulation uh, joy, happiness in your personal space. And then uh, you're going to be a lot more successful and a lot more productive in helping others, whether it's your own family or whether it's the community you're helping as a light worker. With that said, feminine, your energy is king of pentacles, clarified by nine of pentacles. Yeah, it's like, you know, the main energy here is you're in charge of your own happiness right? Imagine this is your kingdom. This is a very actually masculine energy. It's not even queen, it's the king, right? You make the rules. You, whatever you say goes, right? And that, of course, should go first and foremost for yourself. But it doesn't mean criticize yourself to death and set yourself to unbearable standards, right? It's like, it's, you know, it's your kingdom, it's your life, and you've created it. This is you, right? And why not living the best life you can? First of all, of course, doing some research and realizing what would that look like, right? This is like a vision board kind of energy. Understanding what makes me happy. What kind of lifestyle I want to build for myself that would work for me. 
and then I'll see how it then can sync up with others. Yes, maybe there will be some adjustments. If you know you have people around you who depend on you, who you depend on, and you want to synchronize your schedules. But you shouldn't start like creating that schedule or creating your daily routine or weekly routine based on what other people are going to be expecting from you. And that's what I do a lot of times too. So even, even though I don't have a family of my own right now, I still have that habit. Like if I have plans with other people, do you, like let's say today's Monday, right? I'm, it's a good day to plan a week to look at what I already have on my calendar, right? To add some more stuff to it that came up just now. And I will still start with the appointments that I have, like just public appointments or time I'm spending with friends, you know, with people that I care for. And then I'll be doing everything else that I have for me around it. And that also, sometimes it can work, but it may not be the best, um, approach in general so i'm still learning myself of how do i turn this around right and at least i'm at the stage where i see if it doesn't fit very well if i feel like i'm really stretching myself or it's going to be exhausting for me or i'm really going to be stressed if i try to work it out into that day that time at least i can say no i can say let's postpone to another week or something for masculines we see two of pentacles clarified by ten of swords so masculines are trying to make it all work. Actually, whatever I was just saying about the schedules and planning calls for the masculines as well. Because they've been struggling to, um, what is it? They've been burning both ends of the candle, right? That's the saying. They've been trying to make it all work. Both actually works because there are two pentacles here, right? Juggling the two. But they're, in reality, there may be more than two that they juggle right and it's painful and they know that they won't be able to carry on much longer this way but right now that's the reality and it's like a hamster wheel you know you get on and then it can be difficult to oops it can be difficult to figure out how to get off it sorry guys i just knocked off some cards i'm gonna those are really nice actually gotta try to pick them up without setting my backdrop on fire Yay, got them. All right, so what's the additional question for today? Let's move on. <laughs> I really I got a little carried away here. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see this. Yes. So we got temperance clarified by four of cups. Oh, this is big time. We, um, patience versus procrastination. This is patience. This is procrastination and boredom, by the way. Uh, it's like, what is a, how do I find the balance, right? What makes sense right now? How do I know whether I'm, you know, being patient and respecting the divine timing? And we spoke about Tent and Portal last week. There's a separate reading for that if you haven't seen it yet, right? And, and I did speak about the general energy of 10 and Wheel of Fortune being number 10 and Major Arcana, right? It's a lot about divine timing and things coming together as the like that X o'clock happens, right? But how do I make sure I don't um, give away too much power or I don't become the victim of circumstances? What do the feminines need to know here? Ten of Cups and the Chariot. Yeah, focus on the emotional fulfillment, right? And then um, like set that tone that energy, that feeling that you want to have when you have your wish fulfillment, right? And here it is about family. I already spoke about it for a while. It doesn't have to be like that. If you're seeing this picture and you're like, that's not my definition of happiness, that's totally fine. But whatever it is in terms of how it makes you feel, your emotional fulfillment, that's what we want to manifest. And then the universe will show the direction. That's how that collaboration works. So that you're not just being passive, you're not idle, you're an active participant, right? Because you are still saying what energetically. That's the best way to explain to the field of the collective, to the universe, to the divine, right? And then uh, you listen for the directions, right? Like the GPS comes from divine guidance and then you follow that guidance. 
what do masculines need to know? We see six of swords clarified by five of wands. Uh, for masculines, understand whether you are moving towards something you want and you're moving away from something. You're avoiding dealing with something. I spoke about that in the show as well. Maybe I'll share the link again in this reading in the comments so you guys can check it out. But it, it was obviously a much deeper dive in that episode in how do we tell the difference? How do we exercise more healthy patience in our life? Uh, for a lot of us, it is a very new skill because we're so much pushed towards action and making things happen, right? But oftentimes it can appear that we are um, taking steps, but in reality, we know that we are basically running away. The steps are not towards, maybe we don't even have that vision, but we're running away from the chaos and panic and other people um, pulling on our energy that we just can't handle anymore, so we run away. I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing, just be aware of that. Because when you run away, it's good for a little while as a goal, right? But then you still want to know where you're going with this, right? You've gotten to safety, that six of swords here. You got out of the panic, out of the stress, and then what? How the feminine seen the connection? That was the set of cards that I saw and I really like this. The sun and the uh, ace of pentacles. Ma feminines really see how this could be, and I mean, with the baby, come on, this could be a start of the family together. They see this long term. Uh, they see a certain beauty in how this connection is unfolding. That's what I'm hearing here. And there is a vision of how it can unfold in the material world. Like, what is the next step for us? How do we take it to the next level, right? The feminines have this vision. Of course, would be different for each of you, but there is a certain level of excitement about it. That's what I'm going to say. And then for the masculines, we see another five of wands clarified by the world. It is a little bit different energy, but it is still about chaos and panic, right? So masculines understand that they need to close out this karmic cycle where other people are distracting them, where they can't really dedicate enough attention and give enough energy to this connection to the feminine, right? So they are dealing with this karmic unfoldings. The world card is showing me that this is coming to a closure. Um, hopefully there will be more revelations this week with the full moon on what exactly is needed here. To close this off, to learn the lessons, to move on, to make sure that, the, you know, for masculines not to fall into the old way again, where they, again, they are overextending themselves and they're trying to have the best intentions. They're trying to help. They're trying to do their best. With a certain extent, I'm here and also trying to prove themselves, for example, at the work split, workspace. Uh, but it's not all that healthy. So this is definitely a certain part of an ego death that needs to happen. But yeah, we will definitely get more guidance on that uh, this week. But I was just say this disengagement from outcomes and... Um, healing, worry, or some trauma from the past really helps. That will help to you, for you to understand what is it that you're aiming for, but it will also help understand that you can and should move from how you used to do things. If that wasn't healthy, wasn't happy, leave that behind, do something different, right? Because a lot of times, even if our brain knows that you know, we've been through a lot, we've been suffering here. Uh, we may still choose to stay where we have been just because it's so familiar, just because we know how to navigate this. Even though, you know, it makes sense that uh, uh, something out there could be much better, right? But a lot of times we don't even try for that reason. So masculines, make sure that you're not stopping yourself from your success, from your happiness based on this kind of judgment. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And until next time.